Hi, everybody. Uh, you're welcome to today's episode of uh, Day in the Life series of the Tech Talk Show with me, Kazim. I have Melissa Ubad on the show with me today. Hi, Melissa, and welcome to the Tech Talk Show. Hi, thank you so much for having me, Kazim. Let have my viewers meet you, Melissa. So can you tell us a little bit about you and what you do for Microsoft? Sure. Um, thank you again for having me. Uh, I am a Teams technical specialist for Microsoft currently. I've been in this role for about two years. Um, prior to that, I was uh, in consulting. Um, I was a pretty early adopter of, of Microsoft Teams. And prior to that, I was really focused on, on SharePoint and I was doing some government consulting. I am located in the Northern Virginia area, uh, just outside of, of DC. Um, and I have a daughter and I like sports and um, the community. I'm a, I'm a former Microsoft MVP. Um, I was focused in uh, business applications as well as the modern workplace products of Microsoft. And yeah, I think that's about it. So you're a technical specialist at Microsoft. So I want to ask, what does it take to be a technical specialist at Microsoft? And uh, what are those skills that one will need to learn to be successful or to be a successful technical specialist? Um, you know, uh, my colleagues and I have pretty varied backgrounds, um, but I would say what we all have in, in common is, you know, a passion for technology and, and learning, learning new things and, and staying up, you know, up to date on the, the newest and latest and greatest, you know, working um, as a technical specialist, I am in, in a sales role. So I am um, the person who a, a sales uh, team member will call in to help um, solve technical issues and blockers for customers who maybe want to move to to using Teams or, or one of our other modern workplace tools, but have questions and need to make sure that it fits with their environment and their current requirements. So I'll come in and, and help in that way. So um, I would say uh, customer service and being you know being comfortable with people and presenting is definitely a skill that that helps, um, as well as just. Uh, being interested in taking complex requirements and fitting it with a solution, um, sometimes being more creative. Other times it, it's easy because our, our products uh, work really nicely. And um, we've seen, we've seen um, especially Microsoft Teams be so critical in the past couple of years. Um, so yeah, I, that, that's about it. I, I mean, as far as like, you know, degrees and, 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 uh, position requirements. I think we have various various backgrounds and paths that we we came to become technical specialists. So let's talk about your journey into IT for a little bit. So so tell us about it. How did you start, and how has the journey so far been for you? Um, you know, I I feel really lucky to have had some of the opportunities that I've had to to work in IT. I'm definitely somebody who um who if i if i see an opportunity i'm willing to to take risks and i i think that uh kind of helped me to to get where i am right now in my my career um in college i started uh working for the it help desk to help pay for college and i started off just part-time and i worked my way into to being full-time um doing like troubleshooting and just help desk type things av equipment for the projectors um, and it was a pretty fun job. I liked it, but my degree was in uh, psychology, and I ended up doing a master's in criminal justice. So um, I moved and worked into that worked in that field for for quite a while, um, doing child protection and investigations. Um, but I always still came back to the technology piece. I was always looking at the reports that we were doing and the tools we were using and thinking of ways it could be better. So, so I was able to to um, get a, a really entry level IT job doing consulting and it ended up being a SharePoint project in, in DC for a government client. And from there, I, I joined the Microsoft community and started doing SharePoint Saturdays. I had really great um, 
mentors and coworkers who taught me and um, really, really helped me um, kind of pave my way in, into bigger things and, and an IT career that I love. So my next question, even though I know that you work for one of the best companies in the world, right? But mm -hmm. I'm, still going to, I'm still going to ask you this, right? What are some of those things that you like about your current job at Microsoft? And maybe you also want to share uh, some of the things that you don't really like so much about it. Um, yeah, sure. So I'll, I'll start off with the, the positive. I really do love my job because I really get to, to uh, be part of like the newest, in my mind, cutting edge technology like this year. Um, besides Teams, I'm also focused on Microsoft Viva, and when that was released, I was just so excited. Um, and I get to, you know, kind of be at the forefront with customers, um, showing them what it is and, and how it could be so valuable, especially in this time where the employee experience has really suffered. And, um, you know, we have the great resignation and just trying to focus on improving uh, how people work in, in their workplace, uh, being in this kind of hybrid state um, has just been really exciting um, and I felt the same way when team with you know with working with teams uh, and I still do um, it, the the thing I miss sometimes is um, getting more hands-on and troubleshooting I was a consultant for a long time so um, I was part of big implementations and sometimes I miss you know going more into the nitty-gritty uh, with customers and um, working to solve issues in their in their environment. Um, I, I do miss that sometimes. Um, as far as working for Microsoft, um, I, I love it. I was in the Microsoft community for years prior to, to joining Microsoft. Um, sometimes it feels a little big, you know, I've worked for varying sized companies. So sometimes it's like, you know, you're, you're just a little fish in a very big ocean at, at Microsoft with such talented people. And, and sometimes, you know, especially now being more remote and we're not doing our in-person like conferences and things, it can feel harder to, to connect with the bigger picture, I would say sometimes, but we do, we have a lot of tools internally to help with that. And I, I have great colleagues. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's about it. So you're a former MVP. So let's talk about the community for a little bit, right? So uh, as a former MVP, just yesterday during our chat yesterday, you were telling me how much of a big deal the MVP summit was for you, right, back then. So, <laughs> so do you miss the engagement you used to have with the community as a former MVP? Or is it still the same now that you've joined Microsoft? Oh, you know what? I think it's just the pandemic that's changed my community experience. I still feel part of the community. Um, I would say I've done less since joining Microsoft. You know, I was always at conferences and, you know, the MVP summit and user groups and things like that um, as a Microsoft MVP. But um, I still, you know, I still want to do those things. And, um, you know, I've, I've, uh, I'm going to be speaking at a conference coming up called Teams Nation, and um, I, I try to attend events when I can. I just really miss the in-person uh, networking and connection. Um, so, so, so yeah, I, I will miss going to MVP Summit when you guys have it in person. I, I know it's going to be awesome, especially after having it, you know, virtual for a while. Um, but I do still feel part of the community um, in a ways will hopefully but, but let's wrap up now with uh, your advice for those uh, that will be watching this and hoping to follow your same full step right so so what advice would you have for those people sure um i would say one of the maybe unique maybe not things about me and my career path is that i don't have a degree in technology and I, I took a break from from working in IT. And, and honestly, I, when I was you know in, in the university, I didn't plan an IT career. Um, it kind of fell in it, it kind of fell into my lap a little bit. Or I would say, as I said, I I took some opportunities that I had and, and took some risks um, to switch careers. But I would just say um, to join a community if you can, especially being virtual. It's opened the doors for a lot of people who maybe didn't have 
a chance to attend a lot of events and things like that. Um, join a community or um, seek mentorship wherever possible. Um, that doesn't always have to be so formal. That could be as informal as a, as a coworker who's just willing to spend time with you and coach you. Um, I, I felt like I needed to prove myself technically more because of not having a, a degree and some of like the, the deeper experience that other people have. So getting certifications and um, blogging and kind of like prove yourself in that way, I would always uh, recommend that. Um, and just try to have fun and follow what what you like. Uh, so this is how much we've got time for on today's episode of the Tech Talk. So hopefully you were able to learn a lesson or two from Melissa's story. So uh, if you find this really useful, then please give it a thumbs up and uh, do subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Uh, so from myself now and Melissa, it's a bye bye, and I'm going to see you again next time. Thank, Thank you, you so very much, much Melissa. Bye. Bye.